this is this is an ongoing project, uh, an ongoing paper that we recently worked uh, with my advisor Jose Olivares and my colleague Lisa Carnacion. And this uh, is uh, uh, basically uh, considering the uh, allocation of externalities in urban freight based on a, any given a strategy that we can consider for better improving freight systems. So I'll go through uh, the presentation first providing a background, uh, the motivation of our research and then the ob a objective and a, a little also on the freight, urban freight issues and the ways to, that we have found to improve a freight systems. And then I'll go deeper into the purpose of the, of the analysis, which is the externalities in urban freight and a, how we um, are developing <coughs> this methodology a, using the Shapley evaluation, using comparative gate theory and some concluding remarks. So, um, the first question is, is freight my neighbor? When we think about uh, living in a city, we tend to think about freight uh, being uh, very far in, your, in the ports, uh, in the sea, uh, if all this uh, bulk of freight is, uh, is in the containers, in the big trucks that are moving from city to city, uh, trains and airplanes uh, and we see this as uh, far away. The reality is that the bulk of freight is in the hotels and the restaurants around it. Uh, it's on uh, very touristic places uh, and where a lot of offices and a lot of uh, 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 the, the uh, small shops are concentrated um, and uh, even uh, smaller uh, 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 roads uh, that were clearly you can see that a freight truck does not get <coughs> there. So uh, the bulk is there but we want to, we don't want it there so what can we do? The fundamental tenet of this research and this has been a, a, a years of research in the, in the area, uh, is that freight activity takes place in all levels and uh, uh, we should consider from the global to the uh, metropolitan urban area and our concentration is urban freight so we want to understand what is, how to tackle this freight at the metropolitan area. And we know that freight activity is a manifestation, physical manifestation of the economy. So taking this into consideration, there is a um, very important uh, aspect here uh, that is that freight is composed of the um, is a result of the decision of many agents. Principally, we we um, are thinking about these three main agents: shippers, carriers, and receivers. And um, basically, these are the ones that are interacting to make freight get into the city. So we have the shippers on one side and we have them uh, uh, sending the, the, the goods, selling the goods to the receiver, to the establishments, but then we have in the middle the carriers and uh, these are the ones that have to respond to the transportation, how to get to the place and uh, which car to use, how, what is the uh, size of the shipment and uh, all of these decisions are going to are going to affect the yeah. So, uh, something that we know and that uh, I think it's uh, recognized in, in, in the community is that freight is complex and that uh, usually in these uh, approaches with freight, simple approaches don't usually work. So, uh, we need to consider that uh, uh, the use of all policy weapons to reduce congestion and improve environmental conditions. So, we have been talking about infrastructure yesterday, and we have to be talking about how to encourage uh, uh, solar issues, how to uh, make traffic better. But the reality is that with freight, the, 
the conditions are not as simple. And it's true, we can build infrastructure, but in many cases this is not <coughs> going to solve the issue. And we can use uh, ITS, we can use a lot of uh, technology, but at the end of the day, it's not going to solve the real problem. So what are the better approaches we have considered so far? Are more comprehensive approaches? And I'll dig deeper into managing demand, which is key in, in, in this um, in this, in this great issue. So uh, the objective of, of this research is to uh, say, uh, understand the impacts of the decisions by agents uh, in the generation of the externalities. When we're talking about the externalities, we're talking about the noise, the pollution, the congestion. Uh, we're talking about all these that is affecting the society, but also is affecting the different the other agents of the, of the of the decision. And we talk about suppliers, carriers, and receivers, but we're not thinking about city government, uh, we're thinking about the real estate sector, and those agents are also very important in the, in the, in the matter. So analyzing various analysis is the first step, and we have, uh, we're considering the social cost of immigration, where we uh, are talking about both a the, the cost involved in the in the private operation and the externalities. So um, in this case, we're only focused. We, we did test this only for CO2 emissions in the externalities, but we're planning to expand this more to other uh, sources of externality to be able to quantify them, those. And we propose comparative game theory to do. Uh, fair allocation of the social cost generated by the decision. So I'll show you this uh, initial result, but we are also expanding it to other cases. Um, so uh, just to, to have an idea, a clear picture, uh, this is um, linear city, which is not like, I, is an ideal city, right? And if you're considering, imagine, imagine where you want to locate your distribution center for the freight carriers, what would be the best option or what would be their ideal option? To move closer to the city or to move farther from the city? What would you think? Closer, farther? Closer. Closer, right? They will reduce their um, their, 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 um, their, their distances to, to get to the, the shops. A, for the, for the, um, um, say the receivers, maybe they want to also get their things fast, but then in the urban core, there's also another issue we have, society itself that doesn't want this distribution centers there, and then we, we have the city government placing also restrictions. So at the end of the day, there should be a point in between where the, uh, the, the, the um, it's more on the social optimal than on say the private. So we don't want to get too fair with the carriers and the economic, the, the, but we don't want to be also too unfair with it. So this is important to understand. So what are the urban freight issues? And I want to show you just a, a glimpse of New York City and what today, eh, as many cities, eh, want to enhance their livability. So we're seeing a complete streets, we're seeing a bus lanes, which are doing a better the quality of life of pedestrians. We're seeing bikes and all of these enhancing to be better livable, to have a better livable city. The reality is that New York City is the third most congested city in the entire world, and the freight is still a, 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 an issue and uh, risk the, the carriers have no options because they have to send the, the goods and the receivers offer no alternative because they are the ones imposing the, the time of the delivery. And so this is what is occurring. There's a, a double, double parking, there is, a, there is a parking on the street, uh, there is a lot of things, and parking tickets paid in, uh, we, we have done previous research and we have estimated that the, the carriers are actually paying and, uh, and, and even the receivers, most of them, 
also accepting to pay for these parking tickets because they, they really don't have any other alternative. Issues are not only in New York City, they're all over the world. And we not only see problems on parking, we see problems on the size of the, the truck and the weights. And uh, we're seeing many uh, other uh, things going on. And uh, just to get, give two examples from colleagues uh, on other parts of the world, this is in Sao Paulo, a uh, um, uh, Colin Waters uh, show us how, what is, what, what was the effect of a introducing ban of big trucks to the to to area um, residential neighborhood. So, but basically, Coca Cola did um, uh, it, it serve the neighborhood with smaller trucks, and that is what occurred in the in the in the, in the, in the two -side issue. Other colleagues from Beijing also show the 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 result of the part of the of the truck ban in the entire metropolitan area or the cities, this yeah, part of the city. And this is what occurred with deliveries. They were shifted to the smaller uh, even uh, bands that are uh, that were for other purposes. Uh, so they, they reaccommodated and this created a uh, worse issue, obviously. So as a result of this uh, ongoing and uh, all this initial research, we have uh, identify uh, initiatives to improve freight systems. <coughs> and one of the things we did was uh, uh, classify uh, it into initiatives. Uh, they are available in, in the NCFRP Report 33. And it's uh, practically a spiral of uh, all, the, all the initiatives from the supply side and from the demand side. And in between, we have obviously the stakeholder engagement. So, uh, just to, to give you two examples, which are the ones that I will be concentrated in the, in the, in the test case. Uh, we have the parking loading areas management, so offering on-street parking and off-street parking to, to propose a, a, a better uh, allocation of the, of, the, of, the, of the deliveries. So we have a freight zones, freight parking, and we have areas a, that are uh, specifically for downloading, for unloading and uploading and, and, and loading and freight. And uh, we have also uh, off-street parking and loading shown uh, to, to be able to improve uh, the, also the, the aspect of freight. And also time allocation, which is also very important for, 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 for managing the situation. On the other side, we also have demand management initiatives where we consider different, there are different uh, initiatives and one of the initiatives that our uh, research group has been uh, has done and will be, uh, for, was successfully implemented in New York City was the voluntary of our delivery. So practically shifting the deliveries to from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. and providing the incentives to the receivers for their commitment to accept these off hours. And the purpose, obviously, was to reduce congestion and pollution. And the um, we did um, implementation of this. <coughs> we did first pilot study and then implementation, large scale implementation. And the results are and sustained. That they are uh, very consistent. And this has been already expanded to other parts of the U.S. and also other parts of the world. So uh, also on the off hours, there are other um, uh, there are other um, uh, uh, demand management initiatives that also uh, introduce or uh, improve, uh, say, the parking, the need for parking. So this is just an example on how parking uh, is in, is is um, reduced. The need for parking is reduced during the day. So we say that in this case we have a peak here, but if we um, consider thirty percent. So if we consider that receivers consolidate the, 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 their deliveries, which is another initiative, then maybe we can eliminate one trip done per day, and this will lower a more than need for parking. And if we if we consider the thirty percent of off hour of the freight trips go to the off hours, it also will reduce much more. But for example, if we do staggered deliveries during the regular hours, so this the time uh, allocation we, we do according we coordinate with uh, many receivers to 
to have uh, staggered deliveries during the regular hours, then it will improve much more the, the need for parking. And if we do 100% of our deliveries, that will be like the best case, but obviously we have, that's great, pretty much unfeasible. So, <coughs> when we consider the externalities of urban freight, we're talking about these, um, obviously these uh, a results of pollution, congestion, as a result of their economic decision or of their, of their um, economic transaction. So in the, just to give a uh, very fast background, you know all of this, uh, the congestion pricing initiative was first introduced as a tax for charging to, be, to better uh, uh, internalize these uh, externalities in the, in the in the in their in their transaction, but a uh, substantial research in the passenger and in this you know uh, is a uh, is very good very good and very promising and has worked, but for freight there's little research and one of um, the the limited uh, research that we have done has shown that congestion pricing is not a game changer. Is not a behavior change. But we know and we understand that we have to internalize freight. And so we, um, we know that the answer is not easy to implement. So if we consider the role of externalities, we consider who is responsible for the, for the problem, then we're able to know what, which one is responsible at, of in this incremental externality that is occurring. And this is a simple ex example of, a, of say, a single carrier that wants to deliver to the, to the business, the CBD. The, uh, and we have two scenarios that we have, offering suitable parking or a time of delivery. So in the base case, we know we have OH, OHD with sufficient space. So we have that we have um, uh, flexibility. So we know that we are going to uh, reduce all these externalities. But then if we talk about then then there's no there's a restriction, we have regular off hour deliveries, then there's gonna be an increment in the externality, say the because of the congestion that the traffic uh, of the vehicle going through traffic in the congestion peak hour. If we add with this that we don't have enough parking, then there's gonna be another incremental a uh, a uh, um, problem based on the inability of building owners and city government to provide suitable space. And then if we have uh, OHD on the other hand, if we have our deliveries, then the incremental in, in externalities would be in the lack of suitable parking. So if you know this incremental, you know who's responsible of these, then you're able to allocate better. And in our test case, we use game theory to, to provide a, a, a solution to the allocation of the externalities and we consider the linear city case I was showing you before and we had a four uh, strategies and we consider supplier locates farther or lower or, or closer and we consider the receivers deciding to do off our deliveries or not when they do uh, coordination then we uh, want to capture what is going on with the, um, the off hour versus regular hours and this first table took, uh, shows the results for the, both the private cost plus externalities and the last table is how the externalities uh, should be allocated. Why, to, why the receivers? Because the receivers are the ones that are deciding on the, on the, on the sense of, of coordinating or not the off hour deliveries. So this would be their distribution based on the cooperative game theory. And in, this would be in the second case where, so the first case is a supplier is very far away. And then the second case is supplier is closer. So you see the reduction here. And more, more you can also see it here in the last, in the last uh, the difference that occurs if the supplier is farther or the supplier is closer. So these are also how the decision of the supplier is affecting the, the result. So in a sense, this is an, uh, um, uh, an, uh, a methodology we have been starting to look at 
to be able to internalize and know what is the, uh, uh, better, how, how better we can allocate the externalities among the responsible agents of the decision. So we know that urban freight takes place at many levels and it's a complex issue and we need to tackle and this is an initial <coughs> effort to, to, to better, um, better consider the allocation of, of externalities so they can uh, really change and uh, change behavior. Um, and uh, this research intends to quantify the use of, uh, of initiatives, not only the off-hour deliveries, not only uh, the location, this uh, parking. So, we are looking for how the, in, in, in essence, all the initiatives would work. Uh, so, uh, this is all we have for now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Diana. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Now the floor is open for questions. Jerome, don't you have your three standard questions? No. <laughs> uh, well, I have uh, one curiosity I would like to ask your opinion. Basically, here you're saying that we should, in a sense, uh, invert, at least modify, what we have been considered so far uh, the correct thing about doing. That is, since there's congestion, there are trucks down the road, and they're circling around for parking. Therefore, we should meet them in the end with you know, a congestion charge. And we know that doesn't uh, work properly because they are just those that are told to do that and they are doing it since they have no market power. Would this imply that we ask receivers, for instance, to pay some congestion charge or some pollution charge? Uh, but how do you think they would react to that? Because that is you know, something, from my perception, is that something they totally don't consider. They don't see themselves as those originating the problem. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, I mean, from your experience in New York, you typically give them incentives in order to accept the off hour delivery. In this case, it would mean that we are hitting them with some sort of congestion charge, which yes, may have some you know, impact on how they react to this. Yes, that is a good, a good point. And we have a, actually, I mean, also based on the experience of New York, is that the receivers in the initial, we had in the initial pilot, we had them offering incentive, but we also not only offer them incentives, but also a, see what happened after the implementation of this. And the, re the, the reality is that today, many of these uh, big receivers that were participating, they're still doing off hour deliveries without the use of the incentives. So they shifted behavior after seeing that the results were, were good. So they were, 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 were measuring <coughs> up what their, they, they, their business was, was going on. The thing about congestion pricing is that carriers are not, they don't have the power to, to do any change. So charging, definitely charging the carriers is not the, 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 the answer. But on the other hand, what we can do and what we started to, 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 to work with was the policy makers. So in a sense, we have to say collaborate the, the, the city with um, a, with the receivers because it's not only charging the receivers and also giving them but it's a is a is a initial collaboration that might uh, work to first start some incentives and then see how how that uh, goes mm -hmm. on so that it's not only just giving yes. the, the receivers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, maybe also the citizens could be involved in this process because they have somehow, let's say, the, the <coughs> uh, they have a relation with the with the receivers basically. So it's the last uh, point of the of, of your uh, uh, yes. what you have showed, uh, starting from shippers and then carriers. Uh, 
receivers and then citizens, basically. So also they, they could play a role in this. One more technical thing uh, is that you use um, cooperative game theory. Why cooperative? I mean, do, do you think okay. they are actually cooperating? I mean, the intention, uh -huh, mm -hmm. the, the intention is to, uh, as a way of allocating efficiently the the the, um, the externalities. In the linear case, maybe you, you didn't see the detail, but in the linear cases, of as far as the fourth receiver is farther away, they have to pay a little bit more. So, what is the fair allocation of their of their of their externalities? It's not just dividing them into four. It's, it's depending on which one is the most uh, the one that is causing more the cost. God, of yeah, who's more proportionally more responsible for for the that's very interesting. You know. Obviously, and that is that is uh, on the pre on the on the assumption that there will be cooperation, right? So yeah, if there is cooperation, then you can. Yeah, yeah, because I don't see that. Um, I mean, it's uh, hopefully that will happen, but I don't think it will automatically happen. Mm -hmm. That's my impression, at least. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, if not, we thank Diana for... Uh,